My name is Michael Shertok, and I am a professor of piano and also uh, serve as a keyboardist in a symphony orchestra. I've also recorded, toured, and traveled as a performing artist, but at the end of the day, I call myself a musician. actually got a bachelor's degree and a master's degree at the College Conservatory of Music. And by the time I was just about to finish, uh, there was an opening in the Cincinnati Symphony for a keyboardist. The previous person uh, had moved to New York City. And I took that audition and was given a try and have been in that position for over 30 years. I began to teach at CCM in 1998 and eventually became a full-time professor there and now chair the department. Of course, to me, music is the most astonishing of all the arts. It is in some ways a universal language understood by everybody but spoken in countless accents. It's always changing, always evolving. One thing I know for sure about making music is that the supreme and constant uh, value in music is rhythm and time. Rhythm, how music moves through time. I think that applies across every form of music, every accent of music, every kind of music. In some ways, a musician's work is not just to improve their voice uh, or improve their virtuosity on an instrument, their skill on an instrument, but really to learn how to move sound through time. I remember my first professional experience playing within the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra. I was awfully young, and I remember attending my first rehearsal with the CSO and realizing every single person in the orchestra was playing their part virtually perfectly uh, while essentially sight reading it and where that near perfection really hit me hard was how everybody subdivided their rhythms. They seemed to read their rhythms as though they had a, an inner click track and the conductor let me know in no uncertain terms that I was not delivering a professional level of rhythmic accuracy. And I was in a bit of a panic. This is my chance. And chances sometimes come only once. So I went to my practice room at the conservatory and uh, realized the tool people have been telling me about for years, the metronome, is going to be my best friend and my savior here. And I took that metronome out and worked obsessively subdividing, uh, trying to make my rhythm as strong as possible. Getting that so that even away from your instrument, you feel and communicate strongly. Somebody even told me, uh, a lot of music is housed in your mind, a lot of music is housed in your heart, but rhythm ultimately is housed in the middle of the body, in the gut. I should have asked more questions. I had no idea what that person was talking about. Now that I'm a little bit older, I think what they mean is when you're playing or singing rhythmically, you're holding a balance of tension and relaxation in the middle of the body. If you're too loose, uh, the rhythm is flimsy. If you're too tight, uh, the rhythm is too vertical and inflexible. So I still spend a great deal of time with the metronome, but in order that my playing does not become vertical and metronomic, I like to listen back, I like to get feedback from other people, and uh, rhythm time. We never stop wrestling with it as musicians. I think that regardless of the genre that fascinates you, every musician is going to need a diverse set of skills and a huge diverse body of knowledge. So I encourage students right away, go on the internet, go on YouTube, and start digging back into the history of the music you are passionate about. Know where it came from, 
what its origins were, even if the origins are ambiguous and complicated and all over the place. Pay a lot of attention to where things came from as well as where things are and maybe where things are going, which we're never entirely sure about. In your community, if you are contemplating studying music beyond high school and perhaps pursuing a career in music, you should be attending musical performances in the genres that you love and maybe even some that you're less enthusiastic about. You should be meeting the musicians in the community and I find most professional musicians, if they see a young person coming with regularity, they're open to talking with them and sharing good, honest, helpful advice about the state of music in the community and music in the world. You don't necessarily want to go up to somebody the first time you meet them and say, will you be my mentor? But if you show up with some regularity or frequency, I think that sense of obligation musicians carry to pass things on starts to come out. And I would have a very hard time saying no to a young musician who said, can I please send you a recording of my work and let me know what you think about it or let me know the areas where you think I could improve. That is something I'm personally very open to. Um, ask the music teacher at your school could you help possibly introduce me to people who are in the field that I am interested in? Another way is to attend summer festivals. So many young musicians and singers have really been excited and sparked by attending uh, summer festivals, and there are so many of them in the Southeast, in the Midwest, in every region of the country has many, many of them. And here in the Cincinnati area, we are in close proximity to quite a few. Young musicians, young singers who are auditioning, what should you think about? I often say, even to an instrumentalist, imagine that you're not only playing your violin or you're playing your saxophone or your guitar or your piano. Imagine that you are the director of this experience as well. It's a very good idea to videotape yourself playing your material and to watch it critically beforehand. Perhaps even videotape yourself walking on and off of a stage, walking to your instrument. How do you address your instrument? This is a good way, I think, to gauge the total package of the experience you are providing to the people who are evaluating your audition. Become comfortable speaking to the people you are auditioning for. It's amazing to me sometimes if we hear 30, 40, 50, or 100 musicians in a day, how many can be so preoccupied and wrapped up with maybe the natural nervousness, the natural anxiety, that they forget to even look at the people that they're playing or singing for uh, to greet them in some way. In other words, don't forget to be a friendly human being. A lot of times what gives a young musician encouragement from their peers and from their families uh, is brilliance, originality, personality. What often sustains a person in the music business is more professional attributes, reliability, preparedness, uh, courtesy, being punctual, being ready, and being flexible. Often maybe brilliance and originality gets a person in the door, um, but often it is reliability, perseverance, constant improvement that keeps a person inside the room.